Welcome to Tessel Bytes, where we survey GIS in small bytes. Today, we will discuss one of the spatial interpolation techniques, IDW, that is inverse distance weighting in ArcGIS Pro. In this video, I will show you how to use IDW, different parameters of this tool, and then what are the pros and cons of this method. IDW is one of the methods that we use for spatial interpolation. We use spatial interpolation to determine a value for a location where we do not have a specific value, but we have sample points nearby. We try to interpolate values from known points to unknown points. Here, the main assumption is that the influence of the variable that we are mapping decreases as we go away from the sample point. This method puts a higher power value or more emphasis on the nearest points. Nearest points therefore have the most influence from the sample points. Here we have a point data. This was created in a previous exercise by random sampling from a DEM data. To learn more about random sampling, Please see the link in the description below. Now to run IDW, go to Analysis, Tools, Toolboxes, Spatial Analyst Tools, Interpolation, and select IDW. Select your input feature. The Z value field will be this raster value which contains all the elevation value here. Once you have selected your input and output, let's see the other parameters. Power controls the significance of surrounding points. That means if we assign higher power, there will be less influence by distant points. Then we will have a map with many bullseye points. However, lower power will ensure more influence by distant points. We have to find a balance between these two. Next is radius. We can keep it variable or fixed. If there are more than one input points nearby with a fixed radius, it will decide which one to consider to determine the value. If we select variable that specify a distance, but here you can specify number of points to use. For power and radius, there is no rule. Usually I go with the default first. Now what would be the best? It varies from case to case. Let's hit run and see our result. Let's check the original DEM on and compare that with our IDW result. We can check the values at different points. Let's see here and maybe here. Let's take another point from here. As you can see in all these three points, the value is very similar. They don't match exactly, but they are close. Now let's check the statistics of these two layers. To check the stat, simply right click on the layer, click properties, go to source and click statistics. This is the statistics of our original DEM layer. And this is the statistics of our IDW raster data. They are not exactly the same, but very similar. So I think the IDW interpolation process ran perfectly here. To recap, we saw how IDW works and what the different parameters are. Remember, IDW works best with fairly dense measurements and if the landscape does not show much drastic changes. 
IDW may not be the best method if input points have many clusters or they are weirdly distributed. I think this is a great stopping point. This has been Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.tesselations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.